every now and again, I'm able, through having pieces in stock, to show how styles progressed during a particular period. And I've got four tables, all of which are fold-over-top tables from the 18th century, that illustrate brilliantly the evolution of styles from the George I right the way through to the George III period. And if we start with this particular table, the wonderful, wonderful George II period fold over top card table made in about 1735 by Benjamin Crook in London. Now, this table has a brilliant burr walnut top and it's got the very finest of thin chevron or feather banding going all the way around the edge here. and cross banding as well. Now the shape of this is interesting because it has these what we call turret corners which are outstanding and there's a reason for that and the reason is that when you open it there you can see you have these four candle stands one at each corner because, of course, they didn't only play cards during daylight hours. So you'd have had a candle on each corner, and these are what we call guinea wells. That's where you would have kept your coins that you would have bet on the game of cards. Betting was always big business here in Britain. They would bet on anything and everything, from horses to dogs to cockfighting, right the way through to cards, and they'd even bet on something as insignificant as raindrops running down a window, which one would get to the bottom first. But this table, as I say, it's George II period, dates from about 1735. It has a draw here in the frieze. And again, just look at this wonderful burr walnut along there. It's also got, on these turret corners, these cabriole legs with the carving here, the C-shaped scroll, and a little bit of foliate decoration carved into the leg there. The feet are what we call trefoil, three foliage patterns of a leaf. This one was made by Benjamin Crook. And we know this because there's a very famous example that has come up in auction that was owned by a very, very good collector. And in the catalogue that I have here from Christie's in April 1999, there is a picture of a table that is almost identical, but which has the original maker's label in there for Benjamin Crook. And on the basis of that and the illustrated examples in other books, we're able to say with some considerable certainty that this was also made by Benjamin Crook. So there we have it, a very beautiful table dating from about 1730, 1735. So now we move on from this table, which is from about 1735, onto this one, which is only about 15 years later, about 1750. But what a dramatic change. We've gone from the burr walnut and walnut to the solid mahogany of this table. Now. It's still got the outstanding corners, but squared off, as you can see here. The interior no longer has the guinea wells, but you would just stand your four candlesticks, as you can see, on the outstanding corners. So we've got that still. It has the single draw in the frieze there, much as the other one did, but this one has a brass handle on it whereas the other one didn't. But stylistically, it's very different. We've still got the cabriole leg, but look at the difference between the cabriole leg on this one and the cabriole leg on that one. Look how the carving here has become the carving there, going much further down the knee. And the leg, instead of terminating in a trefoil toe, has now got these large, 
ball and claw feet, very powerful, symbolic feet. The mahogany on this is the early mahoganies that we see, very heavy, very dense. And as I said, this one dates from about 1750, as against the 1735 of the walnut one. And it's interesting just to see how styles have changed, how fashions have changed. A lot of it would have been to do with the architecture changing as we go through the 18th century. So we've gone from the George II, 1735, to George II, about 1750. And as we go on, we'll see the changes that occur right the way through to the end of the 18th century. Well, we've seen this table that was made in the middle of the 18th century, and if we now go 30 years further ahead in time, up to about 1775, 1780, we come to this table. And you'll note that the rectangular form of that has now given way to this semicircular D-shaped. And it's interesting to see how, whereas the previous two tables were both card tables, one lined with suede and this one lined with baize, so that the cards didn't slip around when they were being dealt, this table, although it's beautifully veneered in mahogany, as you can see, has got a wonderful colour and grain, but is a polished surface on the inside. And that's interesting because a lot of these tables were made in pairs. And a true pair is a card table and a tea table. This one dates, as I said, from about 1775 to 1780. It's mahogany, but look how these cabriole legs here have now given way to these square tapered legs on this one. The square tapered legs terminating on what we call spade feet. Spade because it looks like a shovel or spade. But this mahogany with this very fine boxwood line inlay, the pale, almost white line inlay, going all the way around the top and on the inside edges of the table when opened on the bottom edge there, but also picking out the frieze and on the legs as well, with a little bit of cross banding around the bottom edge of the frieze. So we've gone from very much the mid 18th century through to about 1780. This one has a double gate action with both back legs swinging out to support the top when open. And it would have been like all of these tables stood at the side of a room except for when it wanted to be used. And then it would have been drawn out, possibly either towards the window so that you had the daylight, or in the late afternoon or early evening, towards the fire so that you had the light from the fire, but also the warmth and the heat from the fire. And then, because these would have stood at the side of a room, your staff, because these were for the sorts of homes that by and large had staff as well, your staff would have brought it out into the middle of the room and laid it out for tea, or for cakes, or whatever. A very beautiful table, in lovely condition, with a fabulous colour, that sweeping mahogany grain that you get on there, from these very, very choice veneers. So we've, we've looked at the early 18th century, we've looked at the mid 18th century, and with this one we were looking at the 1775-1780 period. And now we move across, and this table is the absolute epitome of the last years of the 18th century, dating from about 1790 to 1800. The shape is still very much a D shape, but a rounded corners and straight front, whereas this one is semicircular. So very much a D shape on this table as well. Still mahogany, but the top is now cross-banded in rosewood. And you also have panels of contrasting wood on the styles here on the frieze. And this one is a card table. And as you can see, it's baize lined, whereas that one had the polished finish on the inside. It was a tea table as opposed to the card table. What is also interesting, though, is to see how these square tapered legs have now been replaced 
at the end of the 18th century with these turn tapered legs and you'll see how they go down and it has what we call ring turning it's very georgian in feel with these rings turned into the legs or turned out of the legs and they terminate in this inverted tulip foot down at the bottom very much as i said late 18th century 1790 to 1800 and there just using four tables we've covered the reigns of George I, George II, and we're halfway through the reign of George III. And of course, with these four tables, we've seen quite a difference in feel, in style, in fashion, from the burr walnut through to the solid mahogany, the veneered mahogany, and the cross banding in rosewood. The legs going from those, I suppose, almost voluptuous cabriole legs right the way through to this rather more austere square tapered leg, followed by the turned leg with the ring turnings there as well. We've looked at the different inlays, the burr walnut table with, of course, that very, very fine chevron banding, the mahogany one still with the outstanding corners, but with no inlay on it at all, through to that one with its white line inlay. Again, the white line inlay or boxwood inlay continued on this table as well, the late 18th century piece. Each piece has its own quite definite colour, grain and quality. But they are all 18th century and they show and emphasise how the styles evolved during that period. They are a reflection of the architecture of the time, the tastes of the time. They are the flavour of the 18th century. Many thanks for watching this video. I do hope you enjoyed it. I would like to invite you to subscribe to my newsletter, which is brimming with my latest acquisitions, detailed histories, and footage of pieces not yet on display on my website. The link to my newsletter is directly below this video. Until the next time.